We're gonna walk the main street of Silverton. This won't take very long. Not at all. <laughs> it looks like maybe a quarter mile up, quarter mile back, and that's about it. it feels, feels like Lucky for us, recently while we were in Colorado, a couple RV neighbors mentioned U Ray in Silverton, Colorado to us. We had never heard of either place. Never heard of it. And they said, whatever you do, you have to see it. It's like a bucket list item. Yeah, for a lot of people. So we were able to scramble a little bit and rearrange some of our reservations to make it work. We were, however, only able to be there in the area for one week because of Dan's work, but so we, didn't we did get make it work. We, we did not get to see you, Ray, unfortunately, but yeah, next, next time. time for sure. <laughs> this, I, I'm so, so glad we ran into these people and who we forget their names. We apologize. We had to thank yeah. them. Silverton was a blessing. It was so much fun. It was one of the funnest weeks we've had in quite a while. Now, when we were in Silverton, we stayed at a campground called Silver Summit RV Park. Yeah. This was probably one of my favorite RV parks, not because of the snet, not to do with the sites. The sites I thought were just okay. They were just right? okay. But you had the Durango Silverton Narrow Gauge Railway, Railroad or Railway. Really? The trains would come right behind our RV site. And it yeah. was so cool. These are the old locomotives, the steam engines. It was a blast. Yeah. Now, a little bit different oh, from yeah. <laughs> the last place we were just at, where at 2 o'clock in the morning we had freight trains freight come trains through. Freight trains coming through. We didn't like those so much. Yeah. But These trains definitely hit differently. They were <laughs> so, so neat. Literally out our front door of yeah. our campsite, they would come. And it was so neat because all the RVers, you could hear the train whistle coming through the, the mountain valleys. You could look outside, you could see the steam coming up, the yeah. smoke. So you knew it was coming. All the uh, other RVers would run out to the train tracks and watch it come by. Yeah, so take pictures, and take video, pictures. wave to people yeah. on the, on the so trains. So <laughs> that, to me, that made the Silver Summit RV Park special. Yeah. Now something else they do, um, it's a typical RV park. You know, it's like, I think I believe it was like $65 a night for yeah. full hookups. They do, however, also rent Jeeps there as well. We'll talk about that a little bit later and uh, coming up. They do rent Jeeps. Um, between that, the scenery, yeah. the trains, it was just a great, great place to stay while we were in Silverton. I wanted to add, Silverton is a very super small town. <laughs> yeah. They have, I think, one little tiny, like, it's like a family grocery store with a deli in it. And I believe they closed at like 8 o'clock or something like that. Yeah. We needed milk and bread, and we barely made it in <laughs> to get milk and bread. But um, just, to, just to be aware, they do have an ice cream shop, however. We do know that. Yeah. <laughs> we did enjoy that. Um, really, really nice people, though. Very small, quaint little town. Just... It was a hidden treasure, is what it was. It was, yeah. Now the RV part was, I thought was special just because of the locomotives, but getting to the RV park, that was a total adventure in of itself. We were coming from Montrose, Colorado, heading down Highway 550, basically going due south. Now the part of Highway 50, 50 between Uray and Silverton is called the Million Dollar Highway. Yeah. <laughs> Never heard of it. However, I had I, heard of it. I had, yes, I had heard of it um, not long after we started RVing. And I, I don't know if you remember or not, but I mentioned to you, everyone talks about the Million Dollar Highway. And I think that it's going to be, we're going to be missing out if we don't see it. Well, we saw it. <laughs> we'll never forget it. Never. This was really, really neat. Between uh, you, Ray, and Silverton, I forget the exact mileage, but it was maybe yeah. 40 miles, something like that. Pulling a 45 foot fifth wheel, yeah. it was 40 miles of pucker factor, I'll tell you <laughs> that. And I'm being totally honest. You're going over three mountain passes. I believe the tallest one is the Red Mountain Pass, somewhere around 11,000 feet above sea level. So you're up there pretty good ways. There's an awful lot of hairpin turns. Yeah. They had the little warning signs, you know, 10 miles an hour, 20 miles an hour 
trust it yeah right Definitely. pulling that pulling our fifth wheel we're going through some of these hairpin turns we would take both lanes to, to make the turn mm -hmm. so you really do have to go slow and watch for oncoming traffic it is doable we did it we did it again we're roughly 60 62 feet in total length yeah, pulling the rv which is really long it, but you were very good i will say just go slow don't yeah. let anyone even if you're holding up traffic he is always he feels bad that he's holding up traffic not this but time this was and someone even told us that do not feel bad at yeah, all you can't especially pulling your rv do not feel bad when you've got traffic lined up behind you yeah. it's better safe than sorry and yeah. he's really good he he you did take that advice yeah. and um you're also really good at pulling over which i didn't mind pulling over at pullover or scenic um overlook overlook places he was good about that too to let some traffic pass um because well, we i got, got to, to enjoy take the more scenery pictures. anyways yeah, yeah we got to take more pictures <laughs> and enjoy the views now the silver or i'm sorry the million dollar highway there is some debate on how it got its name yeah. there's a there's a few <laughs> theories guess, yeah. out there uh one being is some of the gravel that they used to kind of build up the road came from a lot of the nearby mines and they're saying that gravel was still so full of gold and silver and um, minerals that it's worth a million dollars so a million dollars worth of gravel right. another theory is it cost a million dollars a mile to to build it um, i think my favorite one though is yeah. Back in the day, yeah. um, supposedly there was a traveler going over the highway. And you gotta remember this highway is extremely curvy up and down, you know, left and right and everything. Um, when the traveler got through, getting through the, the million dollar highway, supposedly he said, and he got vertigo. He got vertigo. He said, I would never travel that tr uh, route again, not even for a million dollars. Yeah. So those are some of the theories on how the Million Dollar Highway got its I name. know we already talked about trains, but Danny tickled me. He was like a big kid in a train store. This was really, really neat. But yeah, we already mentioned that we had these locomotives that would come by our, our site, I think two or three times a day. It was, it was just so, so neat. Now this is the Durango to Silverton Narrow Gauge Railroad. And basically what happens is, you can get on a typical, I should say a typical experience would be you get on the trains in Durango, Colorado. Mm -hmm. You're going to head north up to Silverton. It's about a three and a half hour ride, ride. up to Silverton. Yeah. You stay in Silverton for a couple hours. You get back on the train and you head back to Durango, which again is another three and a half hour um, ride back to Durango. Right. While you're on the train, there's no cell service and there's no Wi-Fi and who cares because you are literally Singing. riding along the Animus River in between the mountain valleys and, and just why would you want to be on a phone anyways, right? right? The, the, we were there in September, right. right? So the aspen trees, to me, the aspen trees would be worth the ride, yeah. right? It's just that beautiful gold and yellow. yellow so pretty it, it was just it, you can't describe it right i love aspen trees anyways but they, it was just unbelievable yeah we also heard there's a package where you can um stay overnight in a hotel in durango however we were not able to do that because we have rodeo yeah so it just didn't work out for us i for we you'd have to double check this but we do believe that you know the train normally starts from durango to silverton so right. and back i think you can do it in reverse i think you can start from silverton to Durango, but you would have to spend the night in Durango right. and come back to Silverton. Dogs are not allowed on the train. Yeah, so, so, and from what I hear, dogs aren't allowed at the hotel either. So it is something that we were kind of bummed about because we would have loved to have had that experience too. And we've heard fascinating yeah. and great things about it, um, but maybe next time. Yeah, so that, that's something we were definitely gonna look into. Now, if you're interested in something like this, the it's roughly a hundred dollars to up to just over $200, yeah. it, depending on the per classes. Per person. Depending on your class of service. So it, it, it is a, a little pricey, yeah. but again, it's all day. Yeah. It's, it's, it's an all day thing. Yeah. So the uh, Durango to Silverton um, Narrow Gauge Railroad was a blast to watch and see. Now while staying in Silverton, one of the adventures we did was to visit the- Wait, 
What about the big adventure? Whoa, 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 whoa. That's safe. We're saving that for part two. Oh, oh, sorry. That's a tease for part two, sorry. by the way. We'll get that into a second. <laughs> but one of the adventures we did was the Mayflower Gold Mill. This was fun, right? Yeah. Now, if fun. you never heard of it, it's basically a, I just picture a gold mine, but it's one of the most advanced gold mines built in the San Juan Mountains. It started, I believe, in 1930 is when it started producing uh, or processing, processing ore, and it ended up, it I guess, closed down in 1991. So just over about 60 years of, of processing ore, right. which was kind of neat. The other neat thing about the Mayflower Gold Mill is it became a National Historic Landmark in 2000. So that's oh, kind of yeah. neat as well. Yeah. Now, I'm going to have to read this because I'll never forget this. This is, this is actually pretty impressive. When the mine was in operation, it produced just under 2 million ounces of gold, 30 million ounces of silver, and 1 million tons wow. of base metals. Mm -hmm. That's an awful lot of money, wow. especially in, t in today's figures as well. Now the mine is only about two miles northeast of Silverton. Yeah. They do charge $12. It's kind of like a self-guided tour. Yeah. Uh, $12 per person. Um, I think if you get like a dollar off if you're a vet or a senior citizen. So, you know. We got uh, both. Yeah, you know, we got both. <laughs> We're old seniors. <laughs> it, was, it was definitely worth it. Um, starting out, yeah, uh, Freddie, you'll meet Freddie here. Yeah, coming say up. hi to Freddie for us. Tell, tell him we sent you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, starting out, Freddie got us got us going. He got us kind of pointed in the right That's direction. Right. Gave us some history of, mm -hmm. of the mine. Um, and then after that, it's a self guided tour, and, and when you walk through from there. Now, I really, really enjoyed, especially the beginning of the tour, where you saw the buckets where they would come in from yeah. the mines. And to be honest with you, a lot of the bigger machinery going back through, I just didn't understand yeah. how it all works, to be right. honest with you. But it's still Very the, the sizes of stuff, yeah. just everything in general was really, really neat. Um, but again, to me personally, Freddie made the tour. Yeah, he did. He is an old miner. Yeah. He, he's been in Silverton his whole life. He understands the mountains. He understands the mines. He understands all the terminology, the history. Yeah. And he absolutely he's, loves his job. And you can tell. He so, loves it. He gets into it and he loves it, sharing anything and everything that he can share. Anything mining. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yep. So the Mayflower Gold Mill was a blast. Hi, Freddie. So I'm assuming back in the day then, if you were here, there'd be like a lot of, I guess, shafts and all in the side of the mountain or? Yeah. Well, every mountain left to right here, is, every one of these is totally honeycombed. Okay. Many, many levels, every dimension. Huh. Um, pretty well hollowed out. And if you went five to seven miles south and east of here, that direction, Everything is again. It's totally mined out. Wow. Okay. Wow. So that happened. Wow. Where's the happiness? Who could say? All our sunshines. Oh wow. So back in the day. Oh, this is cool. None of none of this junk would be here. No corrugated metal. Oh. Um, this would all be just a plank floor. It'd be open. You mean open. like open? It'd be open. Really? Yeah. yeah so like you said. Just like this, but open. Wow. The rail here would curve in around like that. It'd just be one continuous flow. This is the oh. incoming side. That's the outgoing side. So let's say I was working over here. As soon as this button detached, I would pull ahead and start pushing it. Now, this show off that I am. <laughs> that's 400 pounds of steel right there. Of course, they're right handed. <laughs> so, what's going on here besides me being a show on? Um, this has been freeze frame since I was 16. I was 16, way over 60 years ago. <laughs> this was so well engineered, it was so well constructed, and then so well maintained that, I mean, 
No one's greased that rail in over wow. 60 years. The bearings, there's Timken roller bearings in there. They haven't seen any TLC for over 60 years. Wow. And, yet, you know, and it's still just... Yeah, yeah. Wow. wow. It's, it's incredible. Wow. Now, that this is loaded out, you might have to lean into it. Yeah. Because if yeah. it's loaded out, there'd be 1,600 pounds of ore, which would make it a way to conditions, I'm afraid to stay. Yes, I'm afraid to go, but now we won't get there that way. This flange, you want it dead. Oh, lock it in place. And just friction clamp on the other side, grab onto the traction rope, ah. and up we go, powered by 250 horse General Electric motors, and you'll be moving along just under five miles an hour. Huh. But you'd have to duck. <laughs> <laughs> You go through one of the trantos, oh my if you God. don't duck, you don't get it. Oh my God, did that really happen? Once. I'm sure. Mm, I bet. Oh. cautionary tale after that. Everybody is a little better about it. <laughs> wow. I bet, yeah. A movie got shot here in 1957 starring Audie Murphy and Jimmy Stewart, two highly decorated war heroes yep. from World War yeah. II. And the title is Night Passage, if you remember stuff with your thumbs like people do nowadays. Um, Night Passage, download okay. the movie, all of this comes to life. Really? Okay, we'll check that out. Night, Night Passage. Night Passage. Okay. We're at what's called the Mayflower Mill. Mayflower Mill. This is pretty cool. It's an right. old mining mill, and you get uh, self-guided tours. Yeah, it's like 10, 12 bucks a person. Yeah, uh, the party have, was kind of. Oh, sorry. I'm, they have a couple of discounts: military, senior citizens, and what and we we applied qualified for both. both. <laughs> Freddie was really, really nice uh, to walk us through to get us started and explain a lot to us. Now we're on our own. Yeah, now it's, I guess it's the self-guided part here. Yeah. But it's really cool. You have all the old machinery in here. You can see how everything worked. He did give us a quick little rundown how the whole operations worked. Um, so now we're going to try to get do all this without getting lost. Yeah. <laughs> Fix your glasses. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. What are you going to do? <laughs> Holy smokes. <laughs> That's just cut. They just burned that out. Now that's an old miner's workout. <laughs> <laughs> what do you call me, an old miner? I know it feels like our best days have fled, but I'd like to think there are still some now ahead. Take my hand, I still believe. Anybody want some cashews? They're only about 100 years old. <laughs> Apparently, we're not miners because we don't have any idea what we're looking at. <laughs> My, I have a couple uncles who would know what it, some of this stuff is, if not quite a bit of it. Pretty interesting, though. <laughs> Double dare you. It's you have amazing how smooth yeah. everything still runs. I think we found the next place for a haunted house. Oh my God, what is it crunching? <laughs> oh the, the, the rat bones below your feet. <laughs> this would make for a really cool haunted house. I'm just saying. <laughs> Oh, 
Okay, well, my finger's going out here. Yeah. That is the nip angle. That's, it's going to vary with the size of the balls, and the balls are going to keep getting worn down. Okay. The whole idea is this is grinding action, and you can control grinding action a lot. You can grind, oh, you know, just to a point where it's just right. And for just right purposes, it would be not super fine, because if it's too fine, it's called slimes. If it's, if it's that fine, the metallic particles are really hard to separate out with oh, rotation. Okay. Whereas, if it's too coarse, you've still got metallic particles that are trapped in oh, the rock. I see, so, yeah. Pretty amazing. That was amazing. That was pretty cool. This is the Mayflower Gold Mill, just I guess east of Silverton, Colorado. If you're ever in town, I would say I highly, highly suggest it. it right. Cool. Even for you really yeah. enjoyed it too, yeah, right? I did. Um, we only spent like an hour in there because they, they closed website said 4 30, but actually today they closed at four o'clock. Uh, so we came right after work. I could probably spend two hours, would probably be I think good. Yeah. Um, one hour I I, I would like to have gone back and seen, saw some more stuff. Yeah. But honestly, we got talking with Freddie, and if you come here, you got to meet Freddie. Got to meet Freddie. He kind of runs, uh, kind of runs the place. Yeah, you know, he and um, son. He and his son, and he. We talked after our tour. We probably talked for forty-five minutes with Freddie. He loves his job, yes, and the he information does. he gave us was just unbelievable. It really, really made the tour. Even that much better, right? Because you get to understand some of the local history. So much, in so much interesting information. Yeah, it was really, really neat. It's just, we could have sat yeah. there all yeah, night. Yeah, personal mining stories, yeah. personal stories of Silverton, yeah. um, just the, uh, the history of miners here and he stuff. Knows and, all these mountains. Yeah, <laughs> pretty cool. So, Very. if you come check the tour out, check out Freddie, make sure you say hello and tell him you said, we said hello as well. Yeah. Awesome, awesome tour. Uh, Again, if you get a chance, it's definitely well worth it. Wasn't that so cool? Seriously, how often can you go and tour a gold mine and be a part of history like that? That was amazing. And they made movies there too. Yes, they did. Quite a few. Yeah, it was it was pretty but cool. But seriously, I even enjoyed it. It was really, really cool. It was fun. Yeah. Now do you want to mention our big adventure? So part two of this video is going to be one of our biggest most fun adventures we have done in almost three years on the road and just the scenery alone is worth watching so make sure next week yeah. watch our follow-up part yeah. two video i can almost guarantee it if you're into i'll give a little bit of hint maybe a little bit of mountains and maybe some back roads in those mountains yeah. the scenery alone is just breathtaking not even kidding it really was incredible Thank you so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed today's video and we hope you enjoy us for part two. Remember, always live life to the fullest. Stay safe, have a great week, and God bless.